Breaking news on 41 Action News starts right now. Breaking news at 10, more than three years after a police officer shot and killed a 17-year-old in Overland Park, the teen's family will finally get to see a key investigative file in that shooting. This is a story we've been following since the incident happened. 41 Action News also filed a lawsuit seeking access to that report. You may remember the officer shot and killed John Albers as the teen was back in his family's minivan out of the garage. Officers were there to conduct a welfare check. Now, the police department says it will release the officer involved shooting investigation investigative team or the OSIT report this week. VI teams Andy Alcock joins us live from the Overland Park Convention Center where the mayor and city council met this evening with the latest reaction. Andy. Yes, uh, Caitlin and Kevin, the reason the city council was here on a different but somewhat related matter, they were here for a job performance review of longtime city manager Bill Ebel. Now, after a more than two hour closed door meeting, that same city council voted 10 to 2 to give Bill Ebel a $10,000 raise, which will bring his salary to roughly $244,000 a year. Now, as we've previously reported, Ebel is the same man who negotiated a $70,000 payout to former Overland Park police officer Clayton Jennison to resign, the same officer who shot and killed John Elbers. In January, as you mentioned, 41 Action News sued the city of Overland Park to get the OSIT report. It came after the FBI opened a civil rights investigation into the Elbers case. Now, according to city spokesman Sean Riley, Overland Park Police Chief Frank Donchez made the decision to release the OSIT report due to an erosion of trust in the department and what the city claims is misinformation about the case. Earlier today, Today, a faith-based civil justice group called More Squared demanded Donchez be fired in large part due to the way this case has been handled. Now, after tonight's closed-door meeting, we asked Mayor Carl Gerlach about the decision to release the OSIT report. I think it's, a, it's the best thing to do. I think there's misinformation out there, and I think we're putting everything to be completely transparent. This will put everything out in the public to be evaluated. And again, this is a decision really the city manager doesn't have the right, the council doesn't have the right to release it. This came from the, uh, the chief of police. Now, we're also told the decision to release the OSIT report has actually been weeks in the making, and part of the reason for that is a lot of redactions had to be done. Some of the redactions include, for example, the uh, scene, uh, the autopsy report, uh, and also medical records for John Elbers. Caitlin? Well, Andy, I know you've worked with the family quite a bit. Uh, what was their reaction to this news? What do they think about this release? Yeah, I did have an opportunity to text uh, with Sheila Albers uh, after this decision was announced, and uh, she says she wants to see the entire unredacted report, doesn't know whether that's going to happen, um, including the three dash cams and also the audio from Officer Jennison, which we didn't even know about until we filed the lawsuit earlier this year. All right, Andy Alcock, thank you so much for that live report. We'll certainly be waiting to see what all is released. As Andy mentioned, tonight's announcement comes amid calls for the firing Overland Park Police Chief Frank Donchez. Organizers with Moore Squared accuse him of repeatedly breaking the public's trust. In an open letter, the group mentioned the shooting death of Albers in 2018. They also criticized the department's handling of protests linked to George Floyd, alleging the city ignored threats from white nationalists. 